Hey, it's Jules on Radio Now 100.9, another edition of Coping with Quarantine with my good friend, Dr. Kelsey. Kelsey, how you doing? I'm doing good, Jules. How are you? I am great. All right. How's the weather in Hartford? <laughs> I've decided the theme is that it's nice during the week and then it gets gloomy on the weekend. So it is <laughs> the storms are a brewing. <laughs> well, I think that we're passing all of our like rainy weather onto you because it has been so. gloomy here, but we're getting the sunshine this evening. <laughs> all right. So let's dive right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about teletherapy. So we're all supposed to be practicing social distancing right now. But what do we do when we need help? Mm -hmm. So first off, what is teletherapy? Yeah. So teletherapy is just basically therapy on an online platform. Some therapists also offer phone sessions, but I think kind of the leading trend right now is to do therapy over the computer. It's as simple as that. The only difference is that you should be filling out online forms and there might be some procedures you have to go through, like listing where you're located at and listing kind of like your crisis plan, just because if something did come up, since you're not in the same room as us, we need to be able to figure out how to get you help if you need it. Mm, yes. So is teletherapy good for children? Is there a specific person that teletherapy does not work for? Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, there's plenty of therapists that do teletherapy with children. I'm sure the younger the child, the harder it is to hold focus. So obviously mm -hmm. you're gonna, the therapist will have to adapt, but we always need parent consent. So if somebody's under 18, the parent needs to fill out consent forms for their kid to do therapy, but they definitely have that option. And regarding, is there somebody who might not be a good fit? I think it's definitely always, we love to say case by case, but I think the exceptions would be if somebody was at such um, a safety kind of concern level that they needed to have a higher level of treatment. So maybe some sort of outpatient program where they check in or an intensive outpatient where they check in every day um, or inpatient where they actually are staying in. So an example of that would be someone with like a severe eating disorder who yeah. also needs medical care at the same time. Yep. Um, so there always are exceptions, but teletherapy is a good fit for most people. So there's a thought that teletherapy might not work or might not be as good as in-person therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, is that true? I think it makes sense why people might think that. They're like, oh, it's over the pho up phone or over the screen. But if you think about it, when you Zoom with friends or FaceTime with friends, you still feel connected to them. You still enjoy the conversations. So you're really getting the same thing out of teletherapy that you would in the office or over the screen. We're asking the same things we'd ask you in the room. We're creating goals together. We're checking in on progress. So there's a lot of research to show that teletherapy is just as helpful as in-person therapy. Obviously, you know how like self-fulfilling prophecy type stuff though, if you go in with a bad kind of mm -hmm. move towards it, it might not be as helpful. Right, and that kind of led me into my next question. You kind of already answered it. Is it harder to make that connection through a screen? I mean, we're seeing each other right now mm -hmm. and I, I do still feel connected to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the only thing that people might notice is like, oh, when's the other person going to be done talking? And so there might be a little bit of that initial moment. But one thing I've actually found is people feel more comfortable in their home. So the fact that they get to have therapy from the comfort of their bedroom, or maybe they even need to do it from a car or something like that. The fact that they don't have to go into some kind of strange office they've never been to before creates this level of safety that helps them kind of address their issues even quicker. So it's been neat to see that um, with the clients I work with over the screen. So would you say some might open up just a little bit more since they maybe mm -hmm. are in a setting that they feel more comfortable in? I think so, or maybe quicker, right? Okay. So like instead of taking 10 sessions, maybe it would take three. But then again, there could be the person who has had in-person therapy for so long that the online bothers them. And that's mm -hmm. okay too. I think it's all about fit. But what I've noticed is that my connection with clients has been just as strong over the screen as it has been in the room. So this kind of leads into the next question. Can you do teletherapy from anywhere? I know this quarantine has us all on lockdown. We're all practicing social distancing. <laughs> but now that those restrictions are lifting, people mm -hmm. are like really eager to get out and travel. So if they need to do a therapy session on the road, can they? 
Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And it gets a little tricky just because every state has different kind of legal requirements. So one of the things that therapists have to make sure is we're licensed in the state of the person we're talking to. So it's not really up to the client to figure out is it legal or ethical or not. It's up to the therapist. But if a client wants to travel to California and you're not licensed in California, likely you can't actually do that meeting. Um, there's been a lot of kind of restrictions waived with COVID going on right now, but when that ends, those restrictions will get like undone. So I think it's always something to check in with your therapist. Most of the time when you go on vacation, you kind of want to just go on vacation anyhow, or you want to go on your trip. So therapy will be there when you get back. Um, but as for can you do it from anywhere in the state? Yeah, you could do it from a car, you could do it from your house, you could do it from your work office, wherever feels private for you. Okay, so what if you're living with roommates and you wanna make sure that it's confidential? Is teletherapy confidential? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So you should be working with a therapist who uses a confidential platform. So it should be HIPAA compliant, so the Health Information Prote Privacy Protection Act is basically the act that makes sure that your health information is protected. So we use a online platform called DoxyMe at the um, practice that I was with. And then we also have some Zoom HIPAA compliant options. But if your therapist is trying to FaceTime you or using social media, those are not confidential. So you always should ask and say, what is the platform we're using? And then for the roommate piece, Let's say that you want to have a session in your home and your roommate's chilling in the living room. It is kind of up to you to find the place that feels private. So one thing I suggest to people is getting headphones you can use so they can't hear what the therapist is saying. And then a white noise machine can do wonders. Put it at, right in front of your door. Or if you're close enough, ask your roommate if they mind leaving for 30 minutes and or go to your car. So there are a lot of options, but it's up to you to figure out how to make it private for yourself. A closet is a great one too. Uh, so you, you mentioned white noise machine. What exactly is that? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, definitely. So I actually have one on right now. Um, but basically, you know, those soothing noises people listen to when they go to bed. It's pretty, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty much like that. And it just makes a very constant sound and it makes it so people in a different room can't hear what you're saying. It just sounds like mumbles. We use them in our therapy offices all the time and they work really well. Oh, okay. That's you can get them on Amazon. That's where I got mine. You can get everything on Amazon, <laughs> I, know. I feel like. All right, so you did mention do, doing therapy over Zoom. I know that there's been people very, very eerie of Zoom because they have gotten hacked. Mm -hmm. So is, mm -hmm. is, can you get hacked doing teletherapy? Not if the platform is HIPAA compliant. So uh, while I have not used Zoom, what I've heard from other practitioners is that there are HIPAA compliant Zoom versions, but those might be oh. paid for. So you'd want to ask your therapist, like, how is the platform protected? We use DoxyMe because it's a, a platform that a lot of medical providers use and it's supposed to be like non hackable. But one thing to keep in mind is email is never private. So while you may have a meeting with a therapist and you feel like everything's confidential, if you go and email them a follow up or list your difficulties in an email, that is something that we don't know where emails go. So right. definitely be careful when you share information. Yes, always. Uh, so let's talk about cost. Is teletherapy usually a little uh, less expensive, more expensive, and how does it work with insurance? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So for the most part, it's pretty much the same price. I think because we're offering the same service, it's just in a different location. So you might not have the commute. You might just be able to go from your bedroom. But in terms of the work we're doing, it's the same. And many insurances are accepting right now. So when you go online, if you go to psychology today and you put your insurance, it'll list providers that offer teletherapy. And you can always call your um, insurance panel because right now during COVID, some of them are waiving co-pays, which is really neat. Nice. Mm -hmm. So that kind of answers the question of how do you know if, you're pro if your yeah. provider is doing teletherapy? And is there another way to find uh, yeah. a teletherapist? Yep. I, so I know I always mention psychology today, but the cool yes. thing about that website is it'll show in the upper corner, a little picture of a video camera. If the provider offers video sessions 
most people are listing in all caps, like I do video sessions and listing if they take intakes or not. I would say, I don't want to make up stats, but a very high proportion of therapists are offering teletherapy right now because otherwise they'd have no clients. And then some practices are 100% online anyhow. So they've kind of been ready for this and they're just going with the flow and doing what they've already been doing for a long time. Awesome. This is all super informational. So thank you, Dr. Yeah. Kelsey Vizzali, for joining us today. How can we connect with you? You can connect with me at Dr. Kelsey Vizzali. I'm on Instagram and I link in YouTube videos. My most recent YouTube video was on applying to graduate school. So I try to drop little topics like that as well as mental health tips. And thank you, Jules, for having me. Yes. Thank, we'll do this again next week. Yeah. Uh, if you missed last week's discussion, we did talk about debunking therapy. You can check that out at radionowindy.com. You can also text Jules, J-U-L-E-S, to 52140, and you'll see that link pop up. As always, uh, remember you can listen to us at radionowindy.com, download the Radio Now app, or just tell Alexa to open Radio Now 100.9.